Hey, welcome to Confession. Uh, I'm going to just make a comment. This is going to be a reaction video. Reading an article on uh, faithfully faithfullymagazine.com. Uh, here's the headline, and uh, I do a lot of reading and a lot of posting, and uh, I'll go throw, the, throw this on Reddit. But uh, a black youth pastor boycotting Beyonce says critics thought he was racist KKK guy or AKA white. They did a really good job with it, that uh, article title though. I'm impressed. Uh, I actually know the guy uh, or, you know, we've been chatting here and there for a while even before Boycott Beyonce, the hashtag came out. His name is uh, Patrick Hampton. We, even before that, agreed to do a documentary beforehand and um, to break the labels and social barriers. Too many times people are automatically uh, generalizing, generalizing everything. As we're individuals, we make our own choices of influence and inspiration. Patrick and I have both been aware of each other for a couple of years, um, battling for the number one spot on Google, um, social media, and uh, nothing but been impressed with him. He's a couple years older than me, and uh, you know, actually quite quite lucky that we share the same name, in my opinion. Both people of God. On top of it, like it's interesting how life works out. But uh, the reason why I want to hit this point is because um, my picture's number one on Google, so people are probably researching the name. They're probably seeing my name in there generalizing that I am KKK, which is the exact opposite. Uh, my background is kind of interesting, and this is why I'm doing this video, as is a reaction video. Um, knowing Patrick's background, you know, he, he got called an or Oreo, used as a racial slur during this whole campaign that he's been putting out. And he turned it really, really well, which was awesome. Took power of the term and overcame it. Uh, I'm gonna do this right now with another term that uh, a lot of my friends call me and this is a big thing that I want to break down, and I'm I'm really doing this video because I think it's it's time that we need to understand the power of a word and the power of a label. Uh, you know, first of all, the KKK. Uh, I jokingly, uh, I come from a really really white community. Uh, I'm gonna just actually break down my my history. I come from Maine. Uh, Maine is one of the whitest cities in, in America, truthfully. Uh, growing up, I didn't see my first person of color until I was probably like 10 years old. Or maybe like just entering school where we had a couple people of color in there. But uh, it, we came from majority of a white community. And I'm not even joking. But the good thing about my community I came from, though, is that... The town right next to us was very gay pride, a gunquit Maine. That stated is that it became one of the top vacation spots and it's one of the top 10 beaches in America. And then funny enough, not even one, two, three towns over, Kenny Bunkport, George Bush, Bush Sr. actually lives. So I grew up in a very interesting uh, progressive community. Maine is a very liberal community, and Maine is a, a very respectful community. Even though if you go up to northern Maine, there is the highest percentage of KKK members in the country. But Lewiston has actually a very, very high percentage of Ethiopians, um, immigrants. And we do a lot of immigrants in the summer for summer workers because the winters are pretty, I don't know, I grew up with them. And now living in Canada, um, you know, I'm used to it for McMurray. Like, they're probably the worst I've ever dealt with, with cold-wise. But after uh, turning 18 years old, I, I ended up, well, 16, I went to boarding school, um, went to the main school of science and math. Uh, before that, I was accepted into York County Community College, um, took, took statistics, and I uh, was tested in calculus actually at 15 years old, which was, which was kind of funny, uh, college level. Uh, and before that, I, I did MIT summer school. Ooh. Um, 
so I got tested with a really high high IQ really early. I think the highest one that I, I ever think I ever remember getting was like at one seventy four. Um, but I've always tested like right either below Einstein or around Einstein with the amount of information that I've accumulated and generalized already. And that's what I, I do is I like to uh, categorize. I don't know. That's how my brain works, metaphorically, whatnot. Anyways, um, after that happened, I tried to go to school. I went to try to go to university. And class has never been my thing. I went to uh, uni university of Maine, Orono, joined Pike. Good times. Ended up leaving there. Went to Hawaii. Moved to Hawaii. Lived there for about a year. Good times. Went there. Moved to Boston. Lived in Boston for about three years. Joined up with the Pike fraternity again. Good times. Um, solidified my hospitality, um, hospitality career for a fallback career before before I would uh make the plunge into film and try to make it in as an artist. And uh, then I went to New England Institute of Art for a little bit. Understood the yeah, it was my my time to really think about what I'm doing with my life. And film was something that I was natural at, funny enough. And acting and up and down. So then I made the decision. Uh, life kind of pushed me. Brother was getting married. Moved to L.A. I uh, moved to L.A. Uh, first to Long Beach. And then I moved to Venice area. Worked on a couple projects. Um, high level. No pay. I was one of the interns that got taken advantage of. Um, Paramount, uh, started, you know, trying to pitch, understand what I was going through, knowing that I had a high ability of screenwriting already and see how one pages were done. And then also learn the industry from the inside out. Uh, I ended up getting pulled off from PA to the runway on a show, um, got casted for that show too, on top of it. I, uh. Worked on a presidential event. I went to Sundance. I uh, did the Rise of Kings uh, concept trailer, actually, for Sundance. Was pitching that. Now I'm getting ready to f promote and film it. This is uh, my first award winning script. And uh, life kind of uh, went on a kind of a turn. I couldn't get any paid work. I was having issues just trying to find ways to get paid, uh, make money. Uh, a lot of people that I originally met, they weren't there as they should have been doing mentor situations, pulling me underneath their wing, especially when I was doing free work for them um, and volunteering to begin with. So nobody was looking out for me. Um, and then a lot, a lot of family issues too. Um, my parents, it's a long fucking story. But then back and forth everywhere, whatnot, um, you know, ended up meeting a lot of people that have been on the streets or walk the streets or whatnot. I uh, worked with an artist. Uh, we had a studio in Hollywood Boulevard. I wrote two features there. I've done a lot. And in between this too, like you know, L.A. You know, I became one of the white boys. Um, I got became a lot, got a lot of friends that are African American, or Haitian American, or uh, Dominican American. Like for me, and living in Hawaii too, um, you know, color of skin is just tells you kind of, and especially with facial features and the way that. Are, our bone and everything's designed tells us kind of where we're from right but our history and what what from that point that we meet each other is what defines who we are one of my best friends is um half malaysian half indian and a hip-hop artist he kind of he actually got me into hip-hop oh we met each other in the indie gathering and uh and a pulling me on alongside a lot of things and ended up meeting a lot of the right people in a lot of situations. And because I am an actor and I know how to train myself properly, I 
taught myself how to do hip hop. Um, and then while I was learning and singing and practicing, I ended up getting pulled off of the street and thrown into and brought into studios, Grind Factory, North Hollywood, then uh, co-founded Vaudeville with Knox Brown. Um, but along this term time, and this is when, where I'm getting to my point now, is that people were calling Patrick uh, white KKK member for boy boycotting Beyonce, and I read a lot of this stuff, and then they turned it when they found he was black, uh, started calling him a coon. Like, that's fucking racist as shit. Like, oh, come on. But, like, double standards and why he did it, because, like, he was sick of the double standards, because all those things people were saying do not represent him, and the Beyonce movements do not represent him as an, you know, as an American. Uh, or what, where his, his viewpoints are. And for me, going to the studios and having a lot of friends that were African American or black power, like, they'd call me a nigger all the time. You like, yo, what's up, my nigger? I'm like, I'm like, yo, what? Like, I don't see that word often. Uh, when I do, usually I use it as a term of ignorance, which, by dictionary definition, there's two meanings to it, and I use it by the second one. But, like, I don't use it because, like, I literally was beaten up saying that word um, by my brother. Uh, listening to Tupac, underage, ignorant, said it a couple too many times because I was getting a reaction and got beat up for it. Truth. And then also fear progression of using that word um, because people literally got killed over that word in America. And it's a painful term if you go through it, but it's used way too much now in pop culture and, and specifically in music culture that it's just like, we need to take power back and use that term as a term of ignorance. And that's exactly what it is. So when reading a lot of these posts that he's been posting up um, from the white copy on say stuff, I, uh, I've, I've seen nothing but respect. Um, seeing how he's controlling the narrative, um, controlling his story, nothing but respect. Like he lost his job over this. If my understanding is correct. Um, because Black Lives Matter is connected to some of the organizations they don't like the comments he was making. He's a freaking pastor. Like, a youth pastor. And he's like, helping people out. Ignorance isn't bliss, guys. Like, it's the 21st century. We need to enlighten ourselves. We've literally discovered this. what's fast in the speed of light. It's a new new time, and we need to accept that and move on. And stop embodying hate that was in the past. Or no, that wasn't in our lifetime. We respect the hate that was in the past. Or respect the damage that happened in the past. But if we just dwell in the past, then we miss the brightness of the future. This is what an artist is all about, and being what an artist is um, meant to be. So this is my confession. You're watching Channel PH. Aloha.